Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives rest to his beloved. And that's what this uh, little study here is about, that the Lord, he is our rest. Um, it was prophesied of Jesus um, in Isaiah 11.10. It says, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, that be in the nations, and his rest shall be glorious. And then uh, in Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty, 28, 30, Jesus said these words, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And this right here is that glorious rest. It is in Christ. Um, that word rest in the um, Hebrew is the word menucha, and it means repose or peace. Figuratively, consolation, specifically matrimony. Hence, concretely, an abode, comfortable, ease, quiet, still, rest. So these are all good things that we like to have in our lives. But the interesting one to me is this... Uh, you know, consolation being specifically matrimony, because when the Lord said here, you know, take my yoke upon you, you know, his yoke is easy. This is, uh, to me, speaking of that, that matrimony of his covenant. And it's interesting because I found here in uh, Ruth chapter one, verse nine, uh, the words of Naomi to Ruth and Orpha, she said, the Lord grant you that you may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. So it, that's just very interesting to me because if you think about it, you know, a woman in the house of her husband, I mean, I know that, you know, the man's supposed to be the provider and, you know, take care of the woman. And then it's like, you know, when your husband holds you in his arms, it's like a feeling of safety, a feeling of rest. And that is something that, you know, a woman can get from her husband. But I just thought it was very interesting that this was part of the description of that word rest. And then also this abode part is interesting, you know, because whenever you think of your home, your house, you know, where you live, it's a, it's a place where you do rest. It's a, it's a place of, uh, you know, ease. It's a, it's a place where you, you know, repose. Um, like when you go on vacation, you know, vacation's fun and everyone likes to take a vacation, but you're always happy to get back home, you know, after a while, because home is where you rest. Um, and then concerning this yoke, you know, the Lord said in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, be not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, what communion has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that bleeds with an infidel? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty. And I just wanted to point out here because of the yoke, because we take the Lord's yoke upon us, you know, that yoke of matrimony, and uh, we become the temple of the living God, but he's also our abode. Um, but I just wanted to point out here these things like communion, fellowship, you know, agreement. These are like things of, of intimacy, um, and the Lord would have us be intimate with him, but not, not with wickedness, not with unbelievers. Um, and then here, I like this scripture in Isaiah 32, 17 through 18, because concerning, you know, that in the definition, the word abode being in there, um, I like this one here. It, it says a lot. It says, and the work of righteousness and I'm looking at this as the work which Christ did on the cross, okay? That work of righteousness shall be peace. And that's what he did. He made peace between God and man. Well, he made peace between God and men who receive him. Okay, and the effect of righteousness would be quietness and assurance forever. 
And I like that because what he did on the cross made us reconciled to God that we could have quietness and assurance forever, not just now in this life, but for eternity. And he said, and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. And where we dwell right now is in Christ. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. And he is a peaceable habitation. Like he said in that scripture above, he said, you know, come learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. He is a very peaceable habitation. Okay, and in a sure dwelling. And it's like he you cannot move him. He will not be moved. Not even his word will be moved. Okay, and in quiet resting places, he made places for us. We all, as different members of his body, we have different places in Christ. But we're all seated in heavenly places. Um, but I did want to bring this little piece here into this because there's only rest in Christ. And um, apart from God, you know, people will not have rest. Because any temporal thing, they might find a little piece of rest in. It's not lasting. Um, but I, I wanted to point out here more so than even men. But this is talking about, you know, evil spirits and the enemy. So when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man... He walks through dry places seeking rest, and he finds none. Now, I know a lot of people teach this uh, scripture here is like someone cast out this demon right here. You know, but he goes back. I don't I don't believe that. I think that uh, they just kind of go around to whom they can and will. They come and go. Like when uh, Satan came before the Lord in the day of Job, and the Lord said, where, where are you coming from? And Satan said, from going to and fro and up and down on all the earth, I think they wander freely. Um, if they're in a man and they want to leave, they can. So I think this here is really talking about a spirit when he just randomly leaves, but he goes back, okay? Because they walk through dry places seeking rest and find none. Okay, so when this evil spirit finds no rest, he goes and gets some more evil like him, worse than him, and he goes back. But I think the reason why is because, you know, they have, like Jesus said here, he said, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. Okay, there's no place in the Lord for the enemy. Because when he said the prince of this world, he's referring to Satan. And then also in Revelations 12, 7 through 8, says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, those are holy angels, fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Okay, that's Satan and the fallen angels. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So they have no place in heaven. They have no place in the Lord. This is the place of the church now. You know, those who are born again. But when they see, they walk through the dry places seeking rest and find none. And that's why the scripture says he goes back. Because God, man is made in the likeness and image of God. And it's like we in this earth, even unregenerate man, the ones who are not born again, they still have the breath of life. Okay. And so I think that's why the evil spirits prefer, you know, it's like they seek rest. They can find no rest because there's no rest apart from Christ. They desire to be in something that has life. You know, it's like when the evil spirit said to the Lord, oh, don't, don't send us, you know, back to the abyss, send us over into that herd of swine. And so when the Lord said, so be it, go, you know, they all entered into those pigs and the pigs ran over and committed suicide, <laughs> you know, but they, for some reason, there's no rest for them except in a body of some sort. So that maybe can help you understand, you know, that the rest that we can have in Christ, if we can come to know it and we should seek it because it's ours. Um, and then concerning, you know, the enemy in Ephesians 4, 27, we're told neither give place to the devil. So, you know, let us make our temple strictly for the Lord. Give the devil no place in our lives. You know, things like uh, anger, unforgiveness, you know, or some sort of sin we're dabbling in. We shouldn't do that because it gives place to the devil in our life. And then, you know, in 1 Peter 5, 9, we're told, Whom? Resist. Steadfast in the faith. We are to resist the enemy. Resist every evil, unclean spirit. Oppose them. Okay, give them no rest. No rest. Okay, but let's go on here. So our rest here, right now, in Christ, um, like, like I was saying, now, you know, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have access 
to deep, great rest in Christ. Um, and I wanted to talk about this because the days we're living in, okay, in Matthew 6, 31, um, Jesus said to the disciples, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And it's like in our life, sometimes we get so busy, so busy. Everything's coming and going, and, you know, life in the world, it just goes on and on and on. And there's so much different things that distract us. And But the Lord said to them at this time, because they didn't have no, they weren't having their rest time, and you need your rest time to be strengthened. He's saying, come apart into a desert place and rest. Okay, that's like come apart to a quiet, alone place and rest a while. Um, we are told in the last days, you know, it says in, in Daniel 12, 4, he said to Daniel concerning the last days, he said, but you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be vastly increased. So if this, you know, many running to and fro is going to be a part of the last days, which it is, okay, then how much more do we need to come apart into that desert place, that alone, quiet place and rest in the Lord? Um, and he says, you know, knowledge shall be increased. And that's interesting always when I look at this, because we not only know what's going on here in our little community, here in our state, here in our nation, but we have access to news from all over the earth and it's like how the lord said you know don't take no thought for tomorrow because the things of today the evil of today is sufficient enough to deal with well it's like we're taking on not only the issues of our own location where we're at now you know things going on in our own city our own state but we're looking at things all over the the world you know and how much more stressful is that, you know? Sometimes uh, too much knowledge ain't good, especially when it's all not such good news. So we really, really need to take that time to come apart into the quiet place, spend time with the Lord and rest so that we can be strengthened. Because also, you know, in Daniel 12, verse 10, we're told many would be purified and made white and tried. Now that's testing. You know, these things right here, being purified, made white and tried, those are usually, you know, harder things. So we need to take that time to go spend time with the Lord, enter into his presence and rest. We just absolutely positively need that. Okay, and then it goes on to say, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And if we're going to be wise, we are going to take that time apart to come apart and spend time with the Lord and rest in Him. And then um, our directions in the scripture here, and I, I very much appreciate the scripture, Psalm 37, 7 through 11, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Okay, fret not yourself because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not yourself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yeah, you shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And to me, peace and rest, they're interchangeable. But look at this. This pretty much touches on everything we looked at. You know, fret not yourself because of him who prospers in the way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Okay, so you can look at that as the wicked in the earth, the things they're doing, or even the enemy. You know, when it says cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret yourself in any wise to do evil. Right here, the, all this right here. Give the enemy no place. Resist him. Oppose him. You know, and not to worry. You know, just wait for the Lord and rest in the Lord. Don't worry. Don't be anxious for anything. Just find your rest in the Lord. And soon, you know, yet a little while, the wicked will be no more. And then we'll have this abundance of peace. You know, like everything in the word, we have our portion now of all good things. But when the Lord comes, we're going to have the full inheritance. Like, 
you know, fullness of joy, not just joy, but fullness of joy. So when the Lord said, you know, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take his advice. Seriously, take his advice because we need, we need his rest in this day. Um, Psalm 103, 1 through 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we need to remember these things. And the reason I put the scripture in here is because of this one. Psalm 116, 7 through 8, it says, Return unto your rest, O my soul. Because sometimes, you know, we can forget things and get caught up in, in the turmoils of this life. So this is good to just remember because, you know, return unto your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Okay, for you've, re you've delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Now, these things here, he, he wouldn't need, I mean, we have eternal life, but when it says you delivered my soul from death, you know, my eyes from tears, there ain't going to be no crying when Jesus comes, no more crying. So this is things in the earth, okay? We can always trust the Lord to deliver us, you know, to keep us, to keep our feet from falling. So don't forget his, his benefits, because he's there and we need to take our rest in him. Um, in Isaiah 30, verse 15, it says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall you be saved, and in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. Okay, so, but take the people who are the ones who are, when it says, In returning and rest shall you be saved, you have returned to God. Okay, and you have found your rest in Christ and you are saved. Then he goes on to say, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. So this lets us know, you know, in quietness and confidence, that's saying in faith, you know, have faith in your God. In quietness, it's like that scripture, it says, be still and know that I am God. Okay, that will be our strength. That's, that's good things to know. We need to know, you know, where our rest is at. And then, so we have this rest now. Then the word also speaks of a rest at death. It says in uh, Revelations 14, 13, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay, until we get to this point in our life, if Jesus don't come before we die, our only rest is going to be found coming away into that desert place and spending time with the Lord in his presence. You know, this rest comes for us all, unless, of course, Jesus comes first. Um, but it also says um, in Isaiah 57, 1 through 2, the righteous perish and no man lays it to heart and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his up, uprightness. I think this one's interesting because it tells us in um, the book of Hebrews, I want to say chapter 12, um, it says you come, we come to Mount Zion. And it says we when we come, you know, to Mount Zion before the Lord, it says we come to a company of innumerable angels. Of course, we come to the Lord, but we also come to spirits of just men made perfect because even though you know when we die to be absent from the bodies to be present with the lord even though we don't have a, a flesh and blood body or a, or a new body we still are spirits you know we're still us so I, I find this interesting when it says they enter into peace they rest in their beds each one walking <laughs> in his uprightness i just think that's neat but anyways in 20 through 21 though notice what it says but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. So you see, outside of Christ, not, not, for, not for evil spirit, unclean spirit, not for wicked men, there's no peace, there's no rest. Um, we have a very, very wonderful blessing in that we can rest, you know, find rest in the Lord. 
Okay, and then there's this full rest, you know, when Jesus comes. It's like everything in the word, like we have the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment of our inheritance. We have Christ in us. We have the Holy Spirit. But it's like one day we're going to be before him, have him in full, face to face. You know, it's like Jesus said, you have the kingdom in the midst of you. It's in you. But yet his kingdom is still going to come. It's like everything we have in peace, but it's coming in full. So when Jesus comes here, John 14, 2 through 3, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions or abodes, if you will. And consider this. I think this is so interesting. If you go back to the beginning, that definition of rest, remember it had that word, an abode. I, I just think it's so cool how the, the word is just woven together. Anywho, okay, so... In my father's house are many abodes. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. See, the enemy and his cohorts, they have no place in heaven no more. But we do, okay? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And he also said, you know, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Like I said, it is in the midst of us. It is in us right now. But yet, it's still going to be coming in full. Um, and this is when the full rest comes here. In 2 Thessalonians 1.7, we're told, To you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And the scripture goes on to say, when he comes to take vengeance on those that know not God, okay? When he comes in wrath. So that is when the full rest will come. Um, and in Isaiah 14, 5 through 7, it says, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Okay, this is when he comes back. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hinders. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Look what happens when the wicked are removed and the Lord reigns. There's rest in the Lord. I just think that's so beautiful. The whole earth is at rest. You know, it says all of creation groans. It just cries out. And it, it does because God is so wonderful. It's like the beauty of holiness is so wonderful. His presence is just awesome. I mean, for things that are good and holy. Um, the Lord will rest too. Now this is a new one to me. I never saw this before, really. So it's neat. Um, Psalm 132, 13 through 14. It says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. There's that abode. Okay, this is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. This just really touches my heart because the Lord's not just saying once he desires us, his holy temple, but twice he tells us, I have desired it. I have desired it. It's like he desires us. Okay. And he's chosen. He's chosen Zion. You know, in, in the book of Revelation, we're told Mount Zion is the holy, the holy city, Jerusalem above. That is his people. Okay. And he's saying, this is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. We are his abode, just like he's our abode. And I don't, I don't understand in my small human mind how the God of creation could find rest in his people. But other than looking at it through matrimony, I mean, a husband and a wife, that, that's, that's the only way I could even understand that and grasp that because God is God and we are not. But it is a beautiful thing, though, that he does rest in his abode forever and he does desire it that just is a blessing um and then in the zephaniah 3 14 through 17 it says sing o daughter of zion shout o israel be glad and rejoice with all the heart o daughter of jerusalem the lord has taken away your judgments he has cast out thine enemy the king of israel even the lord is in the midst of you you shall not see evil anymore in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord your God is in the midst of thee. He is mighty. He will save. 
He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. What a beautiful day that's going to be. This is just like here. The enemies cast out. And just like that scripture we read, they will be no more. The wicked will be no more. Satan is going to be brought down. You know, and when the Lord comes, what a beautiful, beautiful time. He rejoices over you with singing. He rejoices over you with joy. The whole earth is at rest. They're singing. What a beautiful picture. In Jeremiah 50, verse 31 through 34, he says, Behold, I am against you, O thou most proud. Now, this is definitely speaking of Satan. Saith the Lord God of hosts, for your day is come, the time that I will visit thee, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none, none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities. Remember, Satan is the God of this world, and it shall devour all round about him. Remember, when the Lord comes back, he says there's going to be fire. Even the heavens, it's a, the earth and the heavens are going to melt with a fervent heat. Okay, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Remember, that would be tried, tested, purged, made white. You know, the beast will make war against saints, okay? And all that took them captives, held them fast, they refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall truly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land. And that is his land, okay? The land of the Lord of hosts. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. As if you consider in the book of Revelation, you know, it talks about mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, whose cup is full of the blood of the saints. But notice this word disquiet, because in the presence of the Lord, for the righteous, for those who have, you know, entered into covenant with God and been born again, for those people, there is rest. Notice he gives rest to his land. He comes. We find rest in his presence. But not so for the inhabitants of Babylon. Not so. They are disquieted from the presence of the Lord. There's no rest to the wicked. So on that note, I, I just find these things uh, wonderful. And that we should keep our eyes on the fact that, you know, this is all going to be over soon. It's all going to be said and done. But while we are waiting, you know, in those times when we are feeling troubled or overwhelmed, you know, let us go to the Lord. Like he said, come unto me. Let us go unto the Lord into that desert place and find rest for our souls. Because that, that is our instruction for these last days. You know, let us spend much time in the presence of God finding rest and strength. Anyways, the Lord bless you to increase your rest time in the Lord. Amen.